In the last part of the series, part 53, we saw Paul's continuous effort of spreading the gospel. We saw him baptize disciples and help them receive the Holy Spirit. We saw that even Paul's apron and handkerchief were being used by the people to perform miracles. We also saw what happens when others who do not believe in Yahshua try to exercise his power. We saw that we need more Apostle Pauls today because he worked tirelessly to spread the gospel to the known world. He did this even when he was faced with strife and tribulation. He placed the gospel as his priority even if it meant his death. As we continue on in the book of Acts, his determination continues and we gain even more examples of how to be a spirit-led believer with the goal of furthering the kingdom of Elohim. Even knowing that he may lose his life, the Apostle Paul continued on preaching and entering into his own metaphoric lion's den. Let's see what happens. Let's begin. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named Euctus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little comforted. Then we went ahead to the ship, and sailed to Asos, there intending to take Paul on board, for so he had given orders, intending himself to go on foot. And when he had met us at Asos, we took him on board, and came to Mytilene. We sailed from there, and the next day came opposite Chios. The following day, we arrived at Samos, and stayed at Trogolium. The next day, we came to Miletus, for Paul had decided to set sail past Ephesus, so that he would not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. From Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church, and when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I have lived among you, serving the Adun with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you, and taught you publicly, and from house to house, testifying to Jews, and also to Greeks, repentance toward Elohim, and faith toward our Adun Yahshua, the Messiah. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy, and the ministry which I received from the Adon Yahshua to testify to the gospel of the grace of Elohim. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of Elohim, will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I am not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of Elohim. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of Elohim, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to Elohim and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for necessities and for those who are with me. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Adon Yahshua, that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. 
sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. So as Luke and the others left Troas to go to Asos by sea, Paul wanted to walk alone. He must have felt the need to be alone with Elohim and hear from him without others' input or distractions. This is the best practice for us all. Sometimes the best thing to do is to be alone with Elohim and allow time for him to speak to you privately. We can clutter our lives with a lot of noise and distractions, and this is often why we can't hear from him. As Paul was traveling alone, he was listening to what the Holy Spirit wanted him to do. He was in a hurry to get to Jerusalem, but he also knew that he wasn't going to see those members of the church again. He did not know what he should expect, but he knew tribulation awaited him. He was not worried about his life. He only wanted to spread the kingdom of Elohim further, no matter what the cost was to him. He was leaving stewardship of the churches to the elders, and he understood the many risks that were against them. He did not warn them against the people on the outside, the unbelievers. He warned them against the savage wolves that would come in among them. Men that would serve themselves and speak perverse things and draw away disciples with them. He told them to expect it. And as we can see through history, Paul was completely right. Let's continue. Now it came to pass that when we had departed from them and set sail, running a straight course, we came to Kos, the following day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara. And finding a ship sailing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had sighted Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed to Syria, and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unload her cargo. And finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. When he had come to the end of those days, we departed and went on our way. And they all accompanied us, with wives and children, till we were out of the city. And we knelt down on the shore and prayed. When we had taken our leave of one another, we boarded the ship and they returned home. And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, we came to Ptolemus, greeted the brethren, and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we, who were Paul's companions, departed and came to Caesarea, and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt, and deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. Now when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Adon Yahshua. So when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Adon be done. So Paul received the warning by the Holy Spirit of the danger that was awaiting him in Jerusalem. It doesn't mean that Paul wasn't meant to go, but that he understood what he was getting himself into. The warning caused the other disciples to try to get Paul not to go but Paul felt led by the Holy Spirit to go. He earlier said that he was bound in the spirit to go to Jerusalem. We will see later that even Yahshua encouraged Paul concerning this. Agabus predicted Paul's imprisonment and suffering. Paul was still pressing forward though. Let's keep going. And after those days, we packed and went up to Jerusalem. Also, some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us and brought with them a certain Manasin of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we were to lodge. And when we had come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. When he had greeted them, he told in detail those things which Elohim had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Adun. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law? But they have been informed about you, that you teach all Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, nor to walk according to the customs. What then? The assembly must certainly meet, for they will hear that you have come. Therefore, do what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them and be purified with them, and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads 
and that all may know that those things of which they were informed concerning you are nothing, but that you yourself also walk orderly and keep the law. But concerning the Gentiles who believe, we have written and decided that they should observe no such thing, except that they should keep themselves from the things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, having been purified with them, entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, at which time an offering should be made for each one of them. Now when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people, the law, in this place. And furthermore, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian with him in the city, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was disturbed, and the people ran together, seized Paul, and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. Now as they were seeking to kill him, news came to the commander of the garrison that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains. And he asked who he was and what he had done. And some among the multitude cried one thing and some another. So when he could not ascertain the truth because of the tumult, he commanded him to be taken into the barracks. When he reached the stairs, he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. For the multitude of the people followed after, crying out, Away with him! Then as Paul was about to be led into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I speak to you? He replied, Can you speak Greek? Are you not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a rebellion and led the 4,000 assassins out into the wilderness? But Paul said, I am a Jew from Tarsus, in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I implore you, permit me to speak to the people. So when he had given him permission, Paul stood on the stairs and motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great silence, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, saying, Brethren and fathers, hear my defense before you now. And when they heard that he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, they kept all more silent. Then he said, I am indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus of Cilicia brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our father's law, and was zealous toward Elohim as you all are today. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also as the high priest bears me witness. And all the council of the elders, from whom I also received letters to the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring in chains, even those who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. Now it happened, as I journeyed and came near Damascus at about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, Who are you, Adonai? And he said to me, I am Yahshua of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, What shall I do, Adonai? And the Adon said to me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. Then a certain Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there, came to me, and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that same hour I looked up at him. Then he said, The Elohim of our fathers has chosen you, that you should know his will, and see the just one, and hear the voice of his mouth. For you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, while you are waiting, arise and be baptized, and wash away your sins. Call on the name of the Adun. Now it happened when I returned to Jerusalem, as praying in the temple, that I was in a trance, and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. So I said, Adonai, they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. 
Then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And they listened to him until this word. And then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then, as they cried out and tore off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under scourging so that he might know why they shouted so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the commander, saying, Take care of what you do, for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. The commander answered, With a large sum, I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, But I was born a citizen. Then immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew from him, and the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. The next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews, he released him from his bonds, and commanded the chief priests and all the council to appear, and brought Paul down and set him before them. So things got hectic for Paul. He was warned that this was going to happen. He even knew it himself, but he was not concerned with that. Now when he got to Jerusalem, James and the elders spoke to him because there were reports that Paul had been urging Jews to abandon the law of Moses. Paul never went away from the law, nor did he ever demand that Jewish believers renounce the law of Moses. He only made it clear that the law could not function as a means of salvation. The fact that he even came to Jerusalem to worship is an example that he never abandoned the law. Paul resisted any attempts to force Gentiles to become Jews. Salvation was through faith alone. Now when Paul was seen in the temple, the Jews who knew of him in Asia immediately made a scene and started an uproar. They accused him of teaching all men everywhere against the law and defiling the temple and they seized him and beat him. The Roman army had to step in because there was an uproar in Jerusalem. Paul definitely had a major influence during his call for ministry. He asked for permission to speak to everyone. He spoke to everyone and wanted them to hear his defense. He spoke to them in their Hebrew language, reminding them that he was not a Gentile, but a Jew like them. So they listened. Paul explained to them that he understood why they were beating him and wanted him dead. They were being zealous for Elohim, and Paul did not blame them for what they had done to him. He explained in his former zealousness, he would have done the same thing. He showed compassion to them, even though they beat him down. We should use this as an example for ourselves when we come against unbelievers that have not placed their trust in Yahshua yet. Paul gave his testimony of how he became a believer in Yahshua. Remember, like Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Don't hide your testimony. People need to hear it. The Jews listened all the way until he said that he was to go to the Gentiles. It is exactly the same thing that happens today in these modern times. Israelites listen until taking the message to the Gentiles is mentioned. Then they attack. History repeats itself. The Jews didn't hate all Gentiles. In fact, they permitted Gentiles who feared Elohim to worship in the court of the Gentiles at the temple. Gentiles were even converted to a Jew being circumcised held under the law of Moses. The Jews were not upset about allowing Gentiles to worship, but at the idea that Gentiles could be on an equal footing with them before Elohim, without even being converted into Jews. The fact that Gentiles could come to Elohim directly by faith in Yahshua was offensive to them. It still is today. So the Jews went back into the uproar and they were about to scourge Paul. The centurion told the commander to be careful of what he does with Paul. It was not lawful that a Roman citizen could be chained, scourged, or killed without proper trial. Paul was actually a citizen of Rome, which applied this law to him. Elohim used Paul's Roman citizenship to spread the gospel to Rome. It's amazing. But Paul was bound, and he was now under the control of the Roman guards. Now many people could think that because of all the warnings that he received, that he should not have went to Jerusalem. Maybe people want to think that he went against the Holy Spirit and got what was coming to him. But we see later that this was all part of Elohim's plan. 
So we will stop at this part here and continue on with the story in the next part of the series. Here's what you need to know from this part in the series. 1. As Luke and the others left Troas to go to Assos by sea, Paul wanted to walk alone. He must have felt the need to be alone with Elohim and hear from him without others' input or distractions. 2. Sometimes the best thing to do is to be alone with Elohim and allow time for him to speak to you privately. We can clutter our lives with a lot of noise and distractions, and this is often why we can't hear from him. 3. Paul was in a hurry to get to Jerusalem. He did not know what he should expect, but he knew tribulation awaited him. He was not worried about his life. He only wanted to spread the kingdom of Elohim further, no matter what the cost was to him. 4. Paul was leaving stewardship of the churches to the elders, and he understood the many risks that were against them. He did not warn them against the people on the outside, the unbelievers. He warned them against the savage wolves that would come in among them, men that would serve themselves and speak perverse things and draw away disciples with them. 5. Paul received a warning by the Holy Spirit of the danger that was waiting for him in Jerusalem. It doesn't mean that Paul wasn't meant to go, but that he understood what he was getting himself into. 6. Paul felt led by the Holy Spirit to go. He earlier said that he was bound in the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. 7. When Paul got to Jerusalem, James and the elders spoke to him, because there were reports that Paul had been urging Jews to abandon the law of Moses. 8. Paul never went away from the law, nor did he ever demand that Jewish believers renounce the law of Moses. He only made it clear that the law could not function as a means of salvation. 9. Paul resisted any attempts to force Gentiles to become Jews. Salvation was through faith alone. 10. Even though the Jews severely beat him, Paul showed compassion in his understanding of the Jews. This should be an example to us all. 11. Paul gave his testimony of how he became a believer in Yahshua. Remember, like Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Don't hide your testimony. 12. The Jews listened all the way until he said that he was to go to the Gentiles. The Jews were not upset about allowing Gentiles to worship, but at the idea that Gentiles could be on an equal footing with them before Elohim without being converted into Jews. The fact that Gentiles could come to Elohim directly by faith in Yahshua was offensive to them. 13. Paul was actually a citizen of Rome, which applied Roman law to him. Elohim used Paul's Roman citizenship to spread the gospel to Rome. It's amazing. You must be ready to speak up for your faith. Give a testimony to others why you believe what you do. You must be ready to proclaim the gospel. The problem today is that too many of us don't know why we believe in Yahshua more than because it was taught to us since we were younger. We grew up in the church and know that we should love God, but that is not a testimony and that will not convert hearts. Be convicted and be prepared to testify on the reason for your belief. This is why the gospel is not being spread today in its fullness. There isn't enough conviction, not enough true testimony. The power of the gospel did not spread around the known world because the Apostle Paul shared the gospel amongst eager ears. It's because he spread it around people who were not open. His conviction led to others' conviction and conversion. When he was being accused, he spoke up about his faith and never shied away from it. He had a testimony ready. He was ready to give a reason for the hope that was in him. And we must be the same way. Be strong in your convictions today and be ready to speak on why you love Yahshua. People straddling the fence need to know and understand. And your testimony may be the difference maker. If you never knew your purpose, this is one of them. Be ready to give your testimony and preach your convictions to whoever gives you their ear. The time is now. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. If you haven't already done so, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. I upload every week. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I would like to give a special thank you to those who have donated to this ministry. You know who you are. I'm sincerely grateful and blessed by you. I am humbled by your support and I praise the Father for each and every one of you. 
Thank you for your obedience to Yahweh's call on your heart. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.